Keith Hubert, Charlie Garnham, Edmund Nelson, Bob Harris, and David King. Mississippi State Bulldog football is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola bottler, by Fred's Discount Stores of Mississippi, by the Gulf Oil Company, and by many friendly sponsors in your hometown. And may we remind you this broadcast is authorized under rights granted to the Mississippi Agricultural and News Networks by Mississippi State University. Any commercial or non-commercial use of the accounts, descriptions, and material used in the broadcast without the express written consent of Mississippi State University and the Mississippi Agricultural and News Networks is strictly prohibited. Mississippi State's on the field. The Auburn Tigers are coming out. And that's the ovation you hear. We'll have the toss of the coin in the center of the football field. The Auburn Tigers have won the toss and will make the decision as to whether they will kick, receive, or defend gold and we'll go from there. Mississippi State will have this slight northeast wind at their back. It's right now about five miles per hour. The Auburn Tigers will receive. The temperature is 54 degrees with a wind chill factor of about 50. Very quickly, some other scores. North Carolina State leads Clemson 7-3 first period. Georgia leading 10-0 over Kentucky first period. Minnesota, Iowa, nothing, nothing first quarter. Michigan over Northwestern, 14-0 first quarter. Nebraska and Missouri are nothing, nothing in the first period. South Carolina's leading North Carolina, 7-0 in the first quarter. And here's one, Syracuse 10, Pittsburgh nothing, first period. West Virginia and Penn State, nothing, nothing in the first quarter. Bob Anger will be identifying the Auburn Tigers for us this afternoon. Our broadcast, of course, is under the direction of Jim Ellis. John Carrero will be working alongside yours truly, Jack Crystal. We're about set to go as Auburn will get their receiving team out, which means that Clayton Buford, B-E-A-U-F-O-R-D, will probably be the deep man for the Auburn Tigers. He's been their kickoff return specialist, having returned four, averaging 22 yards per return. Mississippi State will get their kicking unit on the field, and Buford will be the deep man for the Auburn Tigers. He's back at about the two-yard line. Bob Morgan tees the ball up along the 40. Flanked on the far side for the Auburn Tigers is Willie Howell. Check the near side man in a moment. Bob Morgan's about ready to come forward on the football, and he does, and he hangs it short. Buford is waiting for it at the five and has it. Comes up the middle to the 10. Out to the 15. Hit as he comes to the 20. Breaks the tackle. Knocked off his feet at the 26-yard line by Bob Morgan, the man that kicked the football. So Buford gets a nice return of about 21 yards. And Auburn will play the ball. First down, 10 yards to go. The officials mark the ball just over the 25 at the 26-yard line. Auburn will have the wide side of the field to their right. And they will send... The split receiver, Tommy Carroll, wide in that direction. They set the wishbone in the backfield. Peoples the up back with Edwards and James, your deep backs, left and right respectively. Joe Sullivan, the quarterback, rolls back to throw on the first play and fires it to the sidelines. The pass is incomplete. Or did he make the catch? He got it complete, Jack. Made a fine diving catch. I could not see. I thought perhaps he might have trapped the ball. The wide receiver, Carroll, getting his sixth reception of the year. He had caught five previously. He picks up uh, almost enough yardage for the first down. Let's see what they do, Marker. They give him first down. First down out of the Auburn 41. So the Tigers come out throwing and register the first first down of the ball game. Bulldogs are in a 5-3 defense as Auburn on first and 10th, their own 41, goes off the option play and Sullivan gives to the first man through and Johnny Cooks meets George Peoples as he picks up a couple of yards. He may get out to about the 43. Johnny Cooks, the All-American candidate at the middle linebacker spot, stacks the play up as it gains two. Second and eight Auburn at their own 43-yard line. No score, ball game just underway. Want to say hello to our good friend, Dr. Joe Vesey, back in Tupelo, Mississippi. Dr. Vesey, of course, normally is here for the Auburn football game, but is making a trip to Egypt tomorrow to check out the Sphinx. So he couldn't be here. Auburn's Joe Sullivan with his wishbone set. One wide receiver, Carroll to the left. Goes off the inside option. He's going to keep himself and get to the line of scrimmage. And that is all. As again, Johnny Cooks knows the play out. 
knocks Sullivan down for absolutely no gain. And of course Auburn has come out with the three, the three plays in running an unbalanced line. First play, of course, running a bootleg action, hitting the receiver for the first down. Two plays have uh, netted about uh, one yard. Chris Woods, the wide receiver, brings in the play as he shuttles with Cowell. Woods will go wide to the right. Auburn's in a full house backfield now. Now they're going to use motion with Edwards from right back to left. Sullivan up underneath on third and eight, checks the defense, wants to throw, rolling left. Looking, fires up field, pass intercepted by Kenneth Johnson at midfield, breaks to the outside, gets a block to the 40, knocked off his feet just shy of the 40-yard line. George Peoples, the offensive fullback, brought him down. Kenny Johnson gets his second pass interception of the year, and the Bulldogs get great field position at the Auburn 42-yard line on a pass interception by Kenny Johnson out of where, Mississippi? Where? Where? <laughs> First down. Mississippi State will have the wide side of the field to their left. Short side of the field to the right of the quarterback, John Bond, who puts his wide receiver to the left, and Danny Knight on the wing to the right, the short side of the field. Auburn's in a 4-3. Give us to Donald Ray King, and the fullback's got three, maybe four, banging inside the 40. Knocked down in front of the Auburn bench along the 39-yard line by David King, the freshman out of Fairhope, Alabama, and Bob Harris, the junior out of Decatur, Georgia, a pair of defenders in the secondary for the Auburn Tigers. The pickup is almost four yards. Let's call it second and six. Mark the ball at the Auburn 39. Bulldogs have Kent Hall at center, Bill Bell, Wayne Harris, the guards, Bobby McAtinas, Roman Grace, the tackles, Jerry Price, the tight end, the wide receiver split to the left, Bond off the option, pitches it, fumbles it, and Auburn has recovered. Bond, as he was making the pitch, was hit. The ball went awry, and Bond may have been shaken up on the play. He's going to come out under his own power. Auburn's Chris Martin made the recovery. And Auburn gets the full football right back. Fumble recovery by Chris Martin. And Auburn gets the ball at their own 39-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. No score, first quarter. Ball is exactly in the center of the football field. So Auburn got great penetration, and just as Bond was making the pitch, his arm was hit. Carroll comes wide to the left. Peoples is the up back. James and Edwards deep, left and right respectively out of the wishbone. Sullivan puts his tight end strong to the left. Goes in the opposite direction on a short side option. Makes the pitch. In trouble and knocked down behind the line of scrimmage is Lionel James as Billy Jackson. The defensive end got over there in a hurry. Greg Williams coming up out of the secondary helped out. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten Auburn at their own 39. Nothing to nothing. Three minutes deep in the first quarter. Auburn shuttles Chris Woods in at the wide receiver spot to the left. Again, Sullivan uses his wishbone set in the backfield. Peoples is the up back. Strong side to his left. Goes in the opposite direction. Goes to the first man through and up to the 42-yard line. Comes George Peoples, P-E-O-P-L-E-S, the senior out of Tampa, Florida, who's been averaging four yards a game per carry. Glenn Collins knocked him down with Curtis Stowers' help. It'll be third and seven, Auburn, at their own 42. Auburn's Lionel James, one of the deep running backs, is only 5'6 and 162 out of Albany, Georgia. Mike Edwards, the other deep running back, is 6'4 and 196, a junior from Bradenton, Florida. Peoples, we just gave you his statistics. Third and seven for Auburn Tigers. Sullivan, one wide receiver left, Carroll, goes on the handoff, and James stacked up as he comes to the 44-yard line, and Auburn will be considerably short of the first down as Lionel James is knocked down. Glenn Collins a little slow getting up for Mississippi State, but he's okay. Auburn will be fourth and five. Put the ball just shy of the 45-yard line, and Bollinger, Allen, B-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R, the senior from Montgomery, who's averaging 43 yards a kick on 37 attempts, will stand at his own 30, kick from the 34. Bulldogs get Bob, Rob Bessmeyer and uh, Glenn Collins back deep along the Bulldog 20, awaiting the pass from center, low pass, Bollinger picks it up, kicks it away, a driving spiral, waiting for it as Glenn Young takes it at the 14, comes up to the 20, gets in the seam at the 25, and knocked off his feet as Auburn got a man into the seam. And over there to make the tackle was Chuck Clanton. The kick was 41 yards. The return was from the Bulldog 14 out to the 25-yard line. A run of about 11 yards. So Mississippi State gets first and 10 at their own 25. Nothing to nothing. First quarter, 10.40 to go in the first period. Auburn will run basically out of a five-man front with two linebackers. Tim Parrington will run the Bulldog offense. As we told you, John Bond was shaken up on the last carry when he was hit 
and lost possession of the ball, so Parrington runs the offense. Puts Danny Knight in motion to the left. Goes off the option and driving Donald Ray King up to the 30-yard line. Gets about four, maybe five. For Auburn's defensive right side. Donnie Humphrey, Danny Skutak making the stop. A gain of four. Second down, six yards to go. Lamar Wyndham will bring a play in from the Bulldog bench. The wing back will replace Danny Knight. He's the sophomore out of Pritchard, Alabama. Tim Parrington, the sophomore quarterback from New Orleans, is running the ball club. Glenn Young is wide to the right. Auburn's in almost a 6-2 defense on second and six. And Parrington off the handoff. Has stacked up, may have fumbled the football. Evidently got it back along the 31. Donald Ray King got on top of it. Donnie Humphrey was a man that knocked him down. Auburn again got good penetration, but the Bulldogs got a couple of yards off that handoff inside. So it is third and four. Bulldogs faced with a possession play in their own territory at the 31-yard line. Danny Knight goes wing to the left. Wide to the right comes Glenn Young. Addicts and King, your running backs behind Parrington. Knight is in motion left. Parrington off the option, rolls right to throw. Looking, looking, may run. Is in trouble, throws complete to Young. He's at midfield, racing to the 40, breaks the tackle. Goes to the out-of-bounds inside 25. Well, what a super job that Tim Parrington did because it looked like for a moment there he was going to just tuck the ball down and run at the very last moment right at the line of scrimmage. The defensive back, of course, came up, left Glenn Young wide open. Tim Parrington able to get the ball to him and Glenn moving on down the field. They said he stepped out of bounds exactly at the 25. That's 45 yards. 44 yards, actually, as he steps out on the 25-yard line. A completed forward pass. Tim Drinkard was the man that chased him out of bounds. The sophomore from Rendon, Alabama. So Tim Parrington showing a lot of poise has moved the Bulldogs to the 25-yard line. Auburn shifting their five-man front. Parrington checks as Auburn settles down. He goes off the option play. Parrington streaking to the left corner, racing toward the 20, knocked down at the 18-yard line, maybe the 19. Chris Martin chased him down, headed him off at the pass, John. Well, he did a good job of running uh, the triple option. Of course, Auburn had sort of shifted to that side, and he was able to find the seam, turn up inside, and pick up good first down yardage. It'll be second and five. Bulldogs at the 20. He said Parrington's knee went to the ground at the 20-yard line. Good to see Tim Parrington playing. Good to see the youngster having an opportunity to work early in the ball game. And he's responded well. Glenn Young, wide to the left. Haddocks and King, your running backs on second and five. Knight to the wide side of the field is on the wing to the right and goes in motion to the wide side. Parrington up underneath, straight hand off to Donald Ray King who pile drives to about the 17. Auburn bangs him back to the 19 with Scootack and Humphrey and Riley and Ottman. All right there. Auburn's a good, strong defensive football team. They've made their recent surge, as John pointed out, on the strength of their defense. The penetration is just inside the 18-yard line. It'll be third down, about three yards to go for the first down for Mississippi State. Lamar Wyndham. Third and three at the 18. Checking in the lineup. Bond on the sidelines has an ice pack over his left eye. He was injured on the first series. Third and three. Tarrington puts his wing to the right. Tim checking offensively. Hands off. Keeps it. Sneaks to the 17, and that's all. Bob Harris. The strong safety came on to plug the hole. Well, Auburn doing a great job, but particularly on the short yardage situation of getting someone penetrating through the line of scrimmage. And, of course, this is the thing that really will disrupt a triple option type of offense. Mississippi State will take a timeout with 7.35 to go in the first quarter. No score. We'll be back after this word from the Gulf Oil Company. Mississippi State, fourth and two at the Auburn 17. They're going to sweep with Wyndham, who turns the corner, races to the 12, has the first down. Lamar Wyndham behind, great blocking out front, John. Well, just a good job of running what we might say just sort of a power sweep or a power handoff. Lamar Wyndham coming in quick motion back to the wide side of the field and good blocking up front to pick up the first down. Bulldogs at the Auburn 12-yard line. Second first down of the ball game, nothing to nothing, first period. Bulldogs will have the wide side of the field to the left with Kent Hall at center, Bill Bell, Wayne Harris, the guards, Bobby Mikatinas, Roman Grace, the tackles, Jerry Price, the tight end, Danny Knight, wing to the wide side, Glenn Young, wide to the short side of the field. Motion, penalty flags are down. Tim Perrin got a late snap. There's motion in the backfield for the Bulldogs and uh, penalty flags are down. Perrin was knocked down back at the 15-yard line. Bulldogs obviously had motion. 
See what the Auburn Tigers want to do with it. They rule that the motion, of course, before the snap of the ball. So Mississippi State will be first and 15 back at the 17-yard line. They'll draw a five-yard penalty for illegal procedure. Lamar Wyndham will bring the play, and he'll shuttle with Danny Knight. Glenn Young will remain at the tight end with Michael Haddix and Donald Ray King. You're running backs behind Tim Parenton. John Bond shaken up on the first series of plays is along the sidelines with an ice pack over his left eye. Glenn Young goes wide to the left. Haddix and King are set strong in that direction. Parenton on first and 15 from the 17-yard line. Handles the ball, wants to throw, does. One man screen to Young, gets a block. Races to the 10, knocked off his feet. Great block in front by Michael Haddix. A one-man screen set up. Martin and Collier brought him down along the 10-yard line. A gain of seven. It'll be second and eight for Mississippi State at the Auburn 10. And Parenton really drill that ball in there. Well, they did a good job of doing it. Of course, Auburn reacted well to it. But uh, as you said, a good block by Michael Haddix that enabled Glenn Young to pick up some pretty good yardage. Parenton was 0 for 2 passing coming in the ball game. He's now 2 for 2. Hitting 1 for 45 on the pass and run. And this one for 7. Wing is set to the right and it's in motion. Danny Knight. Tim Parenton at quarterback on the inside handoff goes to the fullback and Donald Ray King is inside the 10 and somewhere along the 7 yard line Christopher Martin upended him we'll see exactly where his forward motion was stopped the officials are going to mark it just about the 7 yard line it'll be 3rd down and 4 for Mississippi State along the 7 near a 5 yards I guess because the first down had to be picked up just outside the 2 yard line Bulldogs come with O.W. Richardson wide to the left Haddix and King are set strong in that direction. Lamar Wyndham's on the wing to the right. And the option play, Parenton keeping, driving straight ahead, fights toward that goal line. He stopped short, but very close to a first down. He just turned it up at the last second and did an excellent job. Nelson, Hardy, Martin right there for the Auburn Tigers to make the stop. And we'll see if a first down has been earned. We may have to measure. And they're going to measure to see if a first down has been earned on the Auburn two-yard line. 5-14 to go in the first quarter. Line sticks will come in. If you hear a big cheer go up, you know it is not a first down. It is short. It'll be fourth and about a foot to go on the Auburn two-yard line. And the Bulldogs now have another decision to make. They made one a few moments ago on a fourth and two and swept with Lamar Wyndham to the wide side. Let's see what the Bulldogs will do here. They're just outside the two-yard line. The ball is inside the three, short of the two-yard line. Auburn crowd down in that end zone. The south end zone are really whooping it up, imploring their defense to make the big play. Nothing to nothing in the first quarter. Bulldogs come on the line of scrimmage. Glenn Young goes wide to the left. Danny Knight sets strong to the right. Haddix and King, your running backs. Auburn's in a nine-man front. Tim Parenton, long snap count on the line of scrimmage. Handles the ball, goes to King. Touchdown, Donald Ray King over the right side. What a super job of just knocking folks back off the line of scrimmage because Donald Ray just almost went in there untouched. Just a good opening to go through on a short yardage. 75-yard drive in 12 plays, including the five-yard penalty. Actually, 11 plays. And Mississippi State's Bob Morgan, who's one of the co-captains along with Dana Moore today, will be on to try the point after a touchdown. Out of the hold of Brent Parker, the freshman quarterback from Breckenridge, Texas. The ball is put down. Morgan's kick is long and high, and he is good. Bulldogs 7, Auburn nothing. Back with the Mississippi State kickoff after this message from our local sponsors. Bob Morgan will kick it off for Mississippi State. Buford's the deep man, and the kick is going to go long. And Buford, five-yard step in the end zone, comes out to the 5, out to the 10, up the middle of the 15, gets outside to the 20. Morgan knocks him off his feet as he crosses the 30-yard line. And twice, Bob Morgan, the kicker, has had to make the tackle. It's been the safety valve, and the little guy from California does the job at the 31-yard line. But Auburn brought that ball out, well, near the 32, so let's give him the 32. A 37-yard run back. He was about 5 yards deep in the end zone. So Auburn down nothing to 7. Will come with Carroll wide to the left. They'll set the wishbone in the backfield. Ron O'Neill is now in there at fullback. He's the freshman, the big, strong, 245-pound youngster working at fullback. And off the option play, Sullivan throws the pass to Carroll. Is trapped. He undershot him. Carroll cutting back inside along the 42-yard line. Had fake going deep and then cut right back in, but they undershot him. Sullivan coming in 
had hit 12 out of 29 for 42 percent. So he is uh, one for two this afternoon with a pass interception. Second down, 10. Auburn their own 32. Auburn goes to a two wide receiver setup now with a wishbone in the backfield. Bulldogs adjust their 4-3 defense accordingly. And Joe Sullivan at quarterback handles the football off the option, makes the pitch. In trouble is Lionel James along the sidelines and out of bounds along the 33 where Billy Jackson and Steve Johnson chased him out. Good reaction, John. By that time, Johnny Cooks uh, got in real quick and made him uh, throw the football a little bit, the pitch fit with football a little quicker than he would have liked. But good uh, reaction on the part of Billy Jackson and Steve Johnson. Third and eight for the Auburn Tigers. They face another third down situation. Auburn with their second possession, actually their third possession of the ball game, set that full house backfield, use motion, with the wing back coming right back to left, Sullivan rolls in that direction, Sullivan is looking under pressure, screens it to the right side, and behind the line of scrimmage, the pass is complete, and driving out short of the first down, comes the tight end, Ed West, where Glenn Collins reacted well and brought him down short of the first down, up near the 40-yard line. The ball was thrown extremely deep behind the line of scrimmage, and Alan Bollinger will check on to do the punting as Auburn will be fourth and two from their own 40. Bollinger's kick a few moments ago was a fine kick of some 42 yards. Stands at his own 25. Twin safeties for the Bulldogs up along their 25. Awaiting the snapback. Low, Bollinger has it. Gets his kick away. A good driving kick to the far side. Young is going to handle it along the 32-yard line. Makes a diving catch. Didn't signal for a fair catch. Just took it to the ground along the 32. And that's a punt of about 29 yards. No return, actually. Doug Taylor was right down on top of him for the Auburn Tigers. And the Bulldogs will start at their own 32. They started moments ago from their 25. And Tim Powerton drove them 75 yards in 11 plays with Donald Ray King scoring his third touchdown of the season. And Parenton again puts one wide receiver left. Glenn Young works his wing back. Danny Knight to the right side. Goes off the inside option to Donald Ray King, who's got a good hole. Breaks over the 40, out to the 42. Great blocking behind Scamato, behind Hall and Grace and Harris. Good blocking inside. Greg Tutt up out of the secondary. Make the tackle for the Auburn Tigers. And the officials indicate that as a 10-yard pickup and a first down for Mississippi State. And that for the Bulldogs will be their fourth. First down, they made three on the preceding drive that netted their seven to nothing lead, which they own right now with a little better than three minutes to go in the first quarter. Parenton off the option again, goes to the first man through, and Donald Ray King doesn't find much daylight. That may be a yard in the middle, John. Well, Auburn did a good job just stacking it up then, and of course, uh, Tim may have misread the play, but Auburn, give credit to the Auburn defense that time for really stacking it up to the uh, right side. Bulldogs bring out Ricky Edwards in at fullback. They bring Danny Knight back in at the wingback spot. Greg Williams and Chris Martin were the two men responsible for stopping the play for the Tigers. Second and nine at the 44. Tim Parenton, sophomore quarterback, running the ball club. Has Al Ricky Edwards in there now at fullback and gives it to Al Ricky. And again, the Auburn Tigers stack it up well along the 45-yard line. Altman, Dow Altman, the middle guard, really got good penetration then. And uh, he was principally responsible for stacking it all up. Al Ricky Edwards helps Johnny Humphrey up. Donnie's a big 6'2", 270-pound defensive tackle. Third and eight, Mississippi State at their own 45. Bulldogs lead 7 to nothing. 2.15 to go, working in the first quarter. Big third down play for both ball clubs here. Tim Perrin checks a 4-3 defense, uses motion with Wyndham to the right side, rolls in that direction, wants to throw, is under pressure, does to Haddix in the backfield, but he is knocked down at the 40-yard line. Bob Harris, the free safety, came up to hit him. Played the ball well, played the defensive position extremely well, and the completed pass actually lost five yards. So it'll be fourth and 13 for the Bulldogs in their own 40, and Dana Moore will be punting to David King. He's the uh, deepest man for Auburn. Dana Moore stands at his own 25. He averages 42 yards a kick. Back at his own 20 is King. High pass from center. Moore pulls it down. End over end. Long kick to the far side. King is going to catch it at the 10. King starts up the middle along the 15 and is going to be ridden down short of the 20-yard line about the 18. Corwin Aldrich downfield for Mississippi State. A 50-yard punt. The return is about 8 yards. And Auburn will play it from the 18-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Bulldogs lead seven to nothing. 
123 to go in the first quarter. Auburn. First and 10 at the 18. Puts Carroll wide to the right. Joe Sullivan operating at quarterback with Peoples. O'Neill and James as three running backs out of that wishbone set. O'Neill the up man. They fake it. They give it to uh, the second man through. And not much room. And there's Johnny Cooks. Rides O'Neill down. Youngster from Mississippi State shaking up a little bit. That's Glenn Collins, but he comes back up okay. Glenn was shaking up earlier, but evidently is all right. They're going to say O'Neill got himself about two before Johnny Cooks pushed him back. Second and eight. Auburn at the 20-yard line. Chris Woods brings the play in for Auburn. Goes wide to the right. Bulldogs set their coverage out defensively in the secondary against him. Joe Sullivan puts his tight end strong to the left. Goes up the middle and uh, nowhere for O'Neill to go. He was met right in the middle by Glenn Collins. First man to hit him and Ernie Barnes. They're doing a good job inside, John. Well, they're doing a great job of uh, really just stabilizing the offensive lineman of Auburn at the line of scrimmage and actually making a lot of uh, hits in the uh, Auburn backfield. Clock shows 30 seconds before the end of the quarter. Auburn will have time to get this playoff. They're third and eight at the 20. Again, uh, Carroll's the wide receiver to the right as he shuttled a play in. Out of the wishbone set, Joe Sullivan checks the Bulldog 4-3 defensive alignment. And Sullivan rolls back in the pocket to throw and has time and sets up and fires to the right side. Pass is intercepted by Steve Johnson, but out of bounds. Johnson stepped in front of the receiver and picked it off, but his momentum carried him out of bounds on the dive. Intended for George Peoples. It'll be fourth and eight Auburn. So the apparent interception, of course, is nullified. Alan Bollinger comes on to punt for the third time. He has kicked 41. He has kicked 29. He'll stand at his own five-yard line. This will be probably the final play of the first quarter with the Bulldogs leading at 7 to nothing. Bollinger stands at the 5, a kick from about the 10. Bulldogs in twin safety back along their own 45, Fessmeyer and Young. We await the snap back to Bollinger. He's got a good snap this time. He's got his kick away and he hangs this one up high. Driving all the way back goes Fessmeyer, grabs it at the 35, breaks one tackle, gets another, fights his way uh, along the 35, and Auburn brings him down, and that runs out the end of the first quarter. Mississippi State 7, Auburn nothing. Back with the second quarter after this message from Fred's Discount Stores. The first gymnastic meet of the season for Auburn's women's gymnastics team. With Mississippi State leading 7 to nothing, the Bulldogs have dominated the ball game defensively thus far after one period of play, allowing Auburn only one first down. That was on the initial pass of the ball game, which was good for 15 yards. Since then, Auburn has not picked up a first down. The Bulldogs lead 7 to nothing. Tim Parenton is running the ball club for Mississippi State. That'll start at their own 34-yard line as the second quarter gets underway. Parenton off the option. Parenton gets uh, out to about the 36, maybe the 37, keeping it himself, sliding into the seam where Danny Skutak, the veteran linebacker, the senior from Opelika, 6-2 and 207, brought him down. Jack, we got some unofficial stats here. Uh, Mississippi State's first quarter rushed 14 times for 44 yards. Auburn eight times for only six yards. King had eight uh, rushes for 29 yards to lead the Bulldogs in their rushing attack. Uh, we've attempted three passes, completed three for 46 yards. Auburn attempted five, completed two, one interception for two, 22 yards. Second and seven, Bulldogs at their own 37, use motion, go on the counter drive inside, and uh, have pick up as a couple of yards as Donald Ray King his nose is it up about the 40 where Edmund Nelson and Quincy Williams brought him down. The officials are marked right along the 40-yard line, so it'll be third down, about four yards to go, and always on third down. With more than two yards to go, you're talking about a solid possession play now. Very important in the opening moments of the second quarter. Glenn Young goes wide to the right. Bulldogs have their running back strong to the wide side of the field. Use motion, come on the option play. Parenton slipping outside, drives straight ahead, but short of the first down. As he tried to cut back, his feet went out from under him along the 41-yard line. Edmund Nelson was putting good lateral pursuit on him. Let's see exactly where forward motion is. Short of the first down along the 42. Gain of a couple of yards, it'll be fourth and two. at the 42. So, in punt formation will come Dana Moore. Let's pause quickly five seconds for station identification. This is the Mississippi State University Football Network. Dana Moore gets a good snap from center. Kicks a driving kick high in the air. King waiting for it. At about the 13, grabs it at the 13, tries to come outside, can't get outside. Jerry Price has got him and brings him down along the 17-yard line. 
Good coverage by Jerry Price. Well, I think some of the Auburn fans thought it might have been a face mask penalty on that, but Big Jerry just did a good job of making an open field tackle. A 45-yard punt by Dana Moore, a return of four yards. So Auburn starts deep in their own territory at the 17-yard line, trailing nothing to seven early in the second quarter, two minutes deep in the second period. Auburn has O'Neill, the up back. They've got James and Peoples, their running backs. Operating at quarterback is Ken Hobby now, a new quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. Ken Hobby, H-O-B-B-Y. Hobby goes to the first man through, and O'Neill runs hard over the 20, out to about the 23. For the Auburn Tigers, second and five for Auburn at their own 23. And Hobby off the outside option, makes the pitch, trying to swing to the outside, penalty flag down, come the Tigers. And George Peoples is ridden down by Festmeyer along the 30. But we've got a penalty marker down back at the 25. And we'll check this out, and I believe it's against Auburn, John. I believe it is, Jack. It may have been a, a clip or something because it happened on the outside. And usually on a wide sweep play like that, you normally have maybe an illegal block of some type. Auburn was second and five and got to the outside. Very successfully for the first time. Holding. Illegal use of the hands and the arms on the offense against Auburn. So we'll have a penalty stepped off. Bulldogs lead seven to nothing on a 75-yard drive with 11 plays with Donald Ray King going over from two yards out. Bob Morgan's conversion made it the seventh point. And it came with 4.53 to go in the first quarter. Auburn draws the penalty, which moves the ball back to the 15-yard line. It'll be second down, 12 yards to go. Auburn, of course, can afford no offensive mistakes here, deep in their own territory. Bulldogs would like to force a turnover if they could. Chris Woods comes wide to the right. Ken Hobby sets his wishbone in the backfield with James. Make that people's in motion, coming back to the wide side of the field. Hobby rolls in that direction, makes the pitch to James. He's running laterally at the 15, comes to the 20, and knocked down at about the 27-yard or 28-yard line. John Miller was the man that finally tripped him up. Well-executed outside option. Well, that time the uh, Bulldog defense came crashing down with Billy Jackson, but Hobby did a great job of being able to pitch the ball real quick, and, of course, there was a lot of running room to the outside, and James picks up the first down. At the Auburn 28-yard line, Auburn registers their second first down here in the first half, which has 11.35 to go. Auburn making a couple of changes. Brings Ed West in at the tight end spot. He's strong to the right. Auburn sets their running backs. Again, O'Neill is the up back out of the wishbone set. And the give is to O'Neill, and O'Neill comes to the 30, and that's about all he's going to get. Johnny Cook's right in the middle, plugging up the hole for Mississippi State. Glenn Collins, Ernie Barnes, pinching down. Gain of a couple. Second and eight at the 30. Wide side of the field is to the left of Ken Hobby. And he sends his wide receiver, Tommy Carroll, in that direction. He has Willie Howell, Lionel James' is deep running backs. Ron O'Neill is the up back on second and eight. Ken Hobby checks a five-man front. Hobby goes again to the first man through, and fighting his way up to about the 33 or 34 is Ron O'Neill. He's six feet tall. He's 245 pounds, a freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. Ernie Barnes and Johnny Cooks pinched him down at the 34-yard line. So Auburn's faced with that third and four possession play. Trailing nothing to seven. Tigers would like to make the first down here. Bulldogs would like to force the punting situation. Two wide receivers, Carroll and Woods, are right and left respectively. And motion goes James to the wide side of the field. Ken Hobby on third and four. Hobby handles the ball. Off the inside option is twisted down. Along the 32-yard line is Mike McEnany. did a beautiful job. Good job of coming through that time. And he really got on Ken Hobby before he really knew what to do. And, of course, this has been a big... Plus for the Bulldogs so far, the Auburn Tigers have had five third down conversions and have yet to, co to convert. Alan Bollinger will be forced to punt it for the fourth time this afternoon. Bollinger stands at the 15-yard line, make it the 16, will kick from the 20. Bulldogs twin safeties back at their own 30. We're waiting the snap. It is a good snap. Bollinger, plenty of time, kicks a driving long spiral. The Glenn Young backpedals all the way to the 14-yard line and has it. Tries to get outside. Kent is knocked down along the 14-yard line. Great coverage by the Auburn Tigers. And they punted that football from one end of the field to the other. The line of scrimmage was a 32, and he kicked it 56 yards. And no return. So Mississippi State with a penalty flag on the field. Penalty flag is down. Let's find out what it's all about. The officials have not indicated. Holding. 
against Mississippi State. Auburn may get the ball back and get enough for a first down here, John. That's exactly what's going to happen, Jack. It'll be first down Auburn. So the Auburn Tigers will get the football back. They had to kick their own 32. But the Bulldogs were detected with defensive holding. So at 9.34 to go in the first half and Bulldogs leading 7 to nothing, Auburn will have the football out at the 41 and will have a first down on the penalty at their own 41-yard line. So Auburn is first and 10 in the middle of the field at their own 41-yard line. Bulldogs get their defense back out. Auburn gets their offense back out. Auburn will send Carroll wide to the left, Woods wide to the right, two wide receivers. Again, the wishbone is set in the backfield. Peoples is strong to the right, James deep to the left. O'Neill is the up back. Ken Hobby at quarterback, checks the 4-3, goes to O'Neill, and O'Neill cannot go. Johnny Cooks and Ernie Barnes just met him in the middle. Knocked him down for no gain. If at anything, he lost about a half a yard. Call it no gain. Second and 10. Auburn at their own 41. Mississippi State leading 7 to nothing. Auburn brings a tight end in, Ed West. One wide receiver, Chris Woods. Bulldogs stay in a 4-3 defense against the Auburn wishbone, which is second and 10 at the 41. Hobby handling the ball, counter option. Comes up the middle, breaks it into the secondary, fights over midfield in the Bulldog territory at the 45. Never taken off his feet as Clay Peacher and Johnny Cook surround him. But that was an excellent option play run by the quarterback, Ken Hobby. Well, he did a good job this time. Instead of coming on outside, he just immediately turned up inside, found a good uh, crease to run up into, and just picked up good yardage for the first down. Auburn's fourth first down, third of this possession, one set up by the Bulldog penalty. 8.40 to go, first half, Bulldogs leading 7 to nothing. Ken Hobby puts Carroll wide to the left, goes on the handoff to O'Neill, who pile drives inside the 40 and down to the 38, where Curtis Stowers and Johnny Cooks Collaborate to make the tackle, but that was just a big, strong, bull your way through. Well, I tell you, that guy's got some kind of legs on him. Of course, 245 pound and about 5 foot 11. Uh, but he's just a tremendous bull type rushing. Second and five, Auburn. Tigers in their best field position of the day. Trailing only nothing to seven. Have got their momentum going right now with young Ken Hobby out engineering at quarterback. Hobby checks a 5 3 defense. Hobby. Bootlegs left to throw. Hobby looking, firing over the middle. Pass caught by the tight end Woods at the 520 and knocked out at the 17. Auburn completes the second pass of the day. Ed West, the tight end, made the grab at the 20, and Greg Williams brought him down, but not until he had reached the Bulldogs' 17-yard line, a 22-yard pickup. Well, a good fake by Ken Hobby because he ran the bootleg action, had plenty of time. He looked for his... A split receiver who ran a downing out pattern. Then a tight end came across, wide open, good uh, first down yardage. Carroll comes wide to the right. Wishbone set in the backfield on first and 10 from the 17. Hobby checks a 4-3 defense this time. Hobby off that bootleg action, hit behind the line of scrimmage by Johnny Cooks who sailed through and dropped him back at the 20. Cooks is having himself a field day this afternoon. A loss of three yards. Second and 13, back at the 20-yard line. Ball is actually outside the 20, almost back to the 21. Seven minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half. Mississippi State leading 7 to nothing. O'Neill is the up back. Lionel James, deep left. Make that Chris Woods. Woods comes in motion, back to the right. They want to swing it to Woods. They do. At the 20, Woods races to the 15 and inside to the 13 and down at about the 12 where Fussmeyer and Steve Johnson bring him down. A pickup on the play of a good solid eight yards. It'll be third and five for Auburn at the Bulldog 12-yard line. Auburn on the drive. Start at their own 17. Stayed alive on a fourth down Bulldog penalty. James and Peoples, your deep running back. So Neil is the up back. Ken Hobby operating at quarterback on third and five. Checks the Bulldog 4-3 defensive alignment. Hobby. Uh, inside option goes to O'Neill who fights his way inside the 10 and very close to a first down along the seven yard line. Steve Johnson brought him down and we wait for the officials to give the sign as to whether a first down has been earned. They want to measure this one. So we'll have a measurement. It'll either be Auburn's sixth first down, fifth of this drive, or there'll be fourth and inches to go. If you hear a big roar go up, you'll know it's a first down. 
The Tigers are doing a great job on their line of scrimmage right now. First down. First down. Goal to go. Auburn at the Mississippi State seven yard line. This will be Auburn's 14th play of the drive. It was kept alive by a Bulldog fourth down penalty. And Auburn seven yards away from pay dirt. On first and goal to go from the seven. Hobby sets his wishbone in the backfield. Long snap count. Hobby off the outside option. This hit and drop back at the 10 yard line. And again, it was number 99, Johnny Cooks. Well, it's Auburn doing a great job right now of uh, running the misdirection option. Quarterback opening one way, reversing, coming back to the other side. Of course, Johnny Cook, uh, the last two times Auburn has run this play, has, has been able to just come through, blitz through, and throw the quarterback for the big loss. Second and 10, Auburn at the 10 yard line. Second and goal, actually. Chris Woods wide to the left. Tight end is Ed West, strong to the right. The wishbone is in the backfield. Again, Hobby checks the Bulldog defense, which is stunning right now. And he goes on a quick inside fake, throws toward the corner. Pass broken up nicely by Kenneth Johnson, but a flag down. <laughs> Greg Williams and Kenneth Johnson were both there. And I'm sure we've got pass interference ruled in the end zone. Chris Woods was the intended receiver. It'll be against the Bulldogs. Auburn will be at the one yard line. It'll be a first down, one and goal to go. That is two penalties that have kept Auburn alive on this drive. And the Tigers are a yard away. Bulldogs lead seven to nothing. Auburn threatening to tie it up. Two tight ends set now for the Auburn Tigers. Unbalanced line, strong right. Javi goes off the option, driving to the goal line, and he got in. Ron O'Neill, I believe. It was Ron O'Neill who stuck it in. So Auburn will go in 16 plays, including the penalties. 83 yards to make it a 7-6 ball game with 5-14 before halftime. Al Del Greco, who's perfect in the extra point department, 12 out of 12, will try to tie up the ball game. Del Greco, out of the hold of Joe Sullivan, will attempt the point after touchdown, which is long and good. We're tied at seven. Back with the Auburn kickoff after these messages by local sponsors. will kick it off for the Auburn Tigers who go 83 yards in 14 plays. Blanks hangs this one high to the near side. Haddix is going to let it go out of bounds. So that'll be an offside or an illegal procedure. And the ball will have to come back. They were trying to kick it away from Glenn Young and kicked it out of bounds. Auburn will be assessed a five-yard penalty and Blanks will have to kick it off from the 35-yard line. Michael Haddix and George Wansley are the deep receivers on the outside with Glenn Young in the middle. They tried to kick it away from the fleet-footed Glenn Young and Michael Haddox wisely let that one just go out of bounds. So Blanks will tee it up just inside the hash mark on the right side of the field so the wide side of the field is to the left of the Auburn kicker. Auburn draws a five-yard penalty for an illegal procedure out of bounds kick on the kickoff. Auburn 7, Mississippi State 7. Bulldogs went 75 yards in 11 plays. Auburn 83 yards and 14 kept alive on two penalties on the drive. So Blanks will kick it off again. Same receiving formation for Mississippi State. Again kicks it to the near side. 
and Haddix is going to again let it go out of bounds and uh, this one again will cost Auburn five yards. So the Bulldogs should get some kind of good field position if they ever kick it in bounds, John. Well, I sure like to think we would even if we're able to return the football because he is, uh, well, I guess he's got a little wind behind him, doesn't he? Little wind out of that east-northeast area, and he's trying to kick it to this, the west side of the field, and the wind might be carrying it a little bit. So move the ball back to the 30, and Blanks will have to kick it off from that point, which means that Glenn Young moves up to the 10-yard line, Wansley on the far side up to about the 18, and about the 17-yard line on the near side is Mike Haddix. In the middle, Al Ricky Edwards is up along the 30. With Corwin Aldrich and Jerry Price, the two blockers, along the 40, and the restraining wall inside the Auburn 45 and 40-yard line. So, with a 7-7 ball game and 5-14 to go, before halftime, Auburn will kick it off again. And Blanks will try to keep this one in bounds. Blanks has twice kicked out of bounds. With 7-7 seven seven with 5 minutes and 14 seconds to go before halftime. Blanks tees it up, comes forward, kicks this one deep. Glenn Young is waiting for it and has it at the 10. Comes up the hash mark to the 20, out to the 25. Knocked off his feet at the 30-yard line. Not roaring that Auburn had recovered the football, but he was long been down. Nope! They're going to give Auburn the football! They really from the ball, Jack. Looked like he was down. Glenn Young was shaken up on the tackle. The Bulldogs will get the football. No way Auburn's going to get that ball. No, they did signal the Bulldogs get it. I thought one official came in and signaled it for Auburn. Glenn Young was on the ground. Knocked down at the 30-yard line and then let the football loose. Auburn jumped on it, of course, and this crowd went wild. And one of the officials did signal Auburn's football. Could not have been. John Bond checks back in at quarterback for Mississippi State. He was hurt on the first series of the ball game. Bond off the inside handoff. Goes to Donald Ray King, who comes up to about the 32, maybe the 33. King coming off the right side. Got himself about three. 7-7 seven to seven ball game. Edmund Nelson made first contact for the Auburn Tigers. Official timeout for the moment. Let's see what we've got here. Timeout called by the officials. Little conference going on along the 33-yard line. And we'll find out what this is all about. They're going to spot the ball really near the 34. So let's call it second and six. I don't know what the conference is all about, John, but it's immaterial. Four minutes and 40 seconds to go before halftime. We're tied at seven. Glenn Young goes wide to the left. Auburn's in a 4-3 defense right now. John Bond handles the ball, rolls left to throw, pass one option, fires it outside to Young, who's got it at midfield and out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds, a step shy of midfield by Greg Tut, T U double T, the junior out of Rome, Georgia. So John Bond hits his receiver for 15 yards and a first down. Out at the Bulldog 49 yard line, fifth first down for Mississippi State. We're tied at seven. I think it may have been a little join going on between the players. I think the officials just stepped in and uh, get the game under control. Just told him to settle out his pro football, eh? First and ten, Mississippi State, a yard shy of midfield. Bulldogs, Bond, rolling right, pass one option, looking, looking. Fires the price, the pass is broken up. Auburn had good defenders with Bob Harris over there, stepped in nicely, broke it up. Bond tried to drill it between two blue jerseys, and uh, they broke it up. It'll be second and ten, Bulldogs at the 49. Lamar Wyndham will bring a play in from the Bulldog bench, shuttling and replacing Danny Knight at the wing back spot. Kent Hall remains at center. Bill Bell and Wayne Harris, the guards. Roman Grace, Bobby Mikatinas, the tackles. Jerry Price is in at the tight end spot. He's strong to the left. And the wing back is set in that direction. Lamar Wyndham. Running backs are Haddix and King. And Bond off the option play. Comes wide. Turns it up inside. Hurdles a man. Knocked down as he crosses the 50-yard line. We got a 15-yard penalty against Auburn, Jack. It was a good late hit on John Bond. Bond was stopped along the 47. As John said, somebody came in late. David King, I believe, was the man that took the shot at John Bond. John had picked up about four yards on the carry. But Auburn's going to be assessed a major penalty. Auburn has had a penalty, major penalty. Mississippi State's had two. This will give the Bulldogs extremely fine field position at the Auburn 32-yard line. And their sixth first down. Two penalties in the Auburn drive helped their touchdown effort. 
Bond took the opportunity to check with the Bulldog offensive staff while the penalty was being stepped off. Bulldogs have two times out remaining. Four minutes to go before halftime. We're tied at seven. Great opportunity to put points on the board. Glenn Young wide to the left. Bond off the inside option. Goes to the first man. And Donald Ray King pile drives inside the 30 to about the 28. Auburn knocks him down at that point with Chris Martin and Dennis Collier. Making uh, the big hit after a pickup of about four yards. It'll be second and six of the 28. And obviously John right here with the clock ticking down with 3.40 to go before halftime in a 7-7 ball game. Bulldogs need points. Well, and certainly you like to, you know, get them going in and take that lead to go in at the uh, halftime. Try to gain that momentum for the second half. Second and six, Mississippi State at the Auburn 28. Auburn in a 5-3 defense now. Bond off the outside option. Keeps, drives straight ahead, fights over the 20. Knocked down inside at about the 19, maybe the 18. On the far side of the football field, Bob Harris and Dennis Collier brought him down. That'll be a first down for Mississippi State. Officials say his forward progress was good for nine yards to the 19-yard line. So the clock shows 3.13. They go before halftime. They'll start the clock as quickly as they set the chain gang, which they do. Bulldogs are huddling at the Auburn 28. They'll come with Glenn Young wide to the left with the tight end Jerry Price to the right with the wing back Danny Knight in that direction. John Bond up underneath the quarterback. John checking. Goes uh, on the option. First man through. And Donald Ray King's got maybe one, maybe two, down to about the 17. Bachman in the middle. Right there to help stack it up for the Auburn Tigers. Linebacker help from Martin and Skutak. The unpile along the 18-yard line will be second down and nine. For the Bulldogs at the Auburn 18-yard line. Two minutes and 37 seconds to go before halftime. Mississippi State has two times out remaining. If they elect to use them, we're tied at seven. In the ball game, it's moved right along. Glenn Young goes wide to the right. On coverage in that direction is Tim Drinkard. For Auburn's Tigers, wide side of the field to the left of Bond, who comes to the short side, keeps on the option and goes to the 16 and is pushed back to the 18. As Auburn, again, with real good pursuit and a good reaction. Well, they're doing a good job right now. Of course, the Bulldogs running the triple option into the short side. And Auburn right now doing a good job of reacting into the short side. Most of the time, you play the defense to maybe give you a strong formation to the wide side. But Auburn doing an extremely good job right now defending back to the short side. Williams, the defensive end, and Edmund Nelson, the defensive tackle on the left side, made the last stop. Third and seven for the Bulldogs at the Auburn 16. A minute and 45 before halftime. John Bond checks a 4-3 defense, rolls back, fires to the left side. Young's got it at the 5, breaks the tackle. Touchdown, Glenn Young. What a super job of a throwing the football because John Bond, there was a defensive end that came in on the blitz, and as soon as he came out of the bootleg action, he had to release the football right on target to Glenn, Glenn Young. He broke the tackle. Bulldogs get the big six. So Mississippi State goes 70 yards in nine plays, aided by a penalty flag themselves to take a 13 to seven lead. Bob Morgan out of the hole to Brent Parker will try to make it a seven point lead with 136 before halftime. Parker will kneel at the 10 yard line. He's got a good snap. Morgan's kick is long and plenty high and he is good. Bulldogs 14, Auburn seven. Back with the Bulldog kickoff after this message from Miller Beer. <laughs> will kick it off. Clayton Buford will be deep. The speedy freshman from Palatka, Florida who averages almost 23 yards a kickoff return. Morgan kicks it deep, sailing it toward the end zone. It is caught at the one by Buford. Comes diagonally across the field at the 10. Tries to get outside at the 15. Breaks to the 20 and Morgan stops, slows him up and he's knocked off his feet at the 29 yard line. Again, Bob Morgan, the kicker had to get over there. That's three kickoffs and three times he's gotten over there and he got a little help that time. 
from Rob Festmeyer. However, Auburn gets the good return, and Joe Sullivan will check back in to run the Auburn attack. First and 10 from the 29. Auburn has all three times out remaining with 127 to go before the end of the half. They'll come with two wide receivers and a slot back to the right out of the eye formation. Auburn will have Lionel James deep and O'Neill close out of the eye. Joe Sullivan rolls off the option, pitches to Lionel James, who's run out of bounds along the line of scrimmage by John Miller, the right linebacker. And John stayed at home and played it well. The junior from Athens, Georgia, faces a counter option and plays it well. No appreciable gain on the play. Call it second and ten at the 29. Out of bounds stops the clock with 1.20 to go before halftime. Bulldogs have grabbed a 14-7 lead. Auburn ran out of the eye formation for the first time in the ball game with two wide receivers and a slot back. And they're in the same formation now. Mike Edwards is in the slot with Woods and West D uh, as wide receivers. James is the deep man. O'Neill is close. Sullivan back in the pocket to throw. Sets up. Looks. Fires deep left side and overthrows everybody in front of the Auburn bench intended for Mike Edwards who had gone down about 10 yards and squared on the out pattern to the sidelines. John, here's the place where you certainly want to hold Auburn and take that momentum into that dressing room with a seven-point lead. Third and ten at the point of... One thirteen on the clock before halftime. Bob Hartley is going to be our halftime guest. We haven't talked to Bob in a long, long time. Robert M. Robert M. Tomorrow's his birthday. I thought he quit having those 20 years ago. <laughs> Sullivan is ready to work on third down and long yardage. Third and ten. Goes on the draw play up the middle. And James comes out to about the 34, maybe the 35. Lionel pinched down by John Miller and by Greg Williams. And time is called out on the playing field by whom? Somebody called it out. But we'll be back after these messages from our local sponsors. They call it. Bollinger kicking the ball a little bit early before we got back following the commercial break. Kicks it 37 yards upfield to Rob Festmeyer, who uh, catches the ball at the 29-yard line and gets a couple of yards on the return out to about the 31. So Mississippi State with a 14-7 lead. One timeout left in 53 seconds before halftime. We'll try to do something about adding to that 14-7 lead with only one timeout in 53 seconds. John Bond checks the 4-3 defense, goes to Haddix on a counter inside, who gets about five, coming up to the 36. The ball Bulldogs may be content to run the clock out. Danny Skutak and Donnie Humphrey collaborated to make the tackle, the outside linebacker on the right side, and the defensive Lightly tackle at that point for the Auburn Tigers. The It'll be second and five, Bulldogs at their own 36. Clock shows only 33 seconds and running. A cold afternoon here in Auburn. Actually, all not that cold, about 54 degrees, but it feels considerably chilly and as much as we haven't experienced much cold weather this year. Second and five, Bulldogs. John Bond goes on the sweep to Haddix, who turns the right side and has a first down out near the 41-yard line. And the clock continues to run with 13 seconds. Now they stop the clock as Williams brought him down on the left side. Quincy Williams making the tackle. Bulldogs left first down and 10 out at their own 41-yard line. Eighth first down unofficially. Time is called out by Mississippi State. And we'll be back with the closing of the first half after this message from Pepsi Cola. More scores furnished by WAUD Radio and over. At the half, Illinois 17, Wisconsin 7. At the half, Georgia 21, Kentucky nothing. In the third quarter, Iowa 10, Minnesota 9. I think I would run the quick Tickets for Auburn's remaining home game will be sold at the West Ticket booth immediately following today's game. Hockey team coming back for Atlanta 
Tulane with a two-game win over Georgia Tech last weekend. We'll meet Tulane tonight at Oxbow Ice Rink in Birmingham at 11 p.m. Student admission, $1. Mississippi State first and ten at the 41 goes on a double reverse with Lamar Wyndham carrying the football for about five yards. Hawk kicks down with seven seconds. That's going to run out the half because the Bulldogs do not have a timeout left. That is the end of the first half. Mississippi State 14, Auburn 7. We'll be back after these messages from the Gulf Oil Company and our local sponsors. Mississippi State will have the option in the second half as to whether they will kick, receive, or defend goal. Dana Moore and Bob Morgan, the two co-captains of Mississippi State, meeting with Edmund Nelson, the captain of the Auburn Tigers. He's their defensive left tackle. And, of course, the working officials this afternoon to make that decision. The indication is Mississippi State will receive. Auburn will kick off. They'll have that slight wind at their back that we've talked about. A wind I don't think has been a factor in the ball game at all this afternoon. A couple of other scores. Alabama's leading Rutgers 24-7 at the half. Of course, Mississippi State plays Alabama next week. We talked about that. Navy's leading William & Mary 21-0 at the half. In the third quarter, Nebraska and Missouri are nothing to nothing. Ohio State's taking a 12-9 lead over Indiana at the half. Georgia's leading Kentucky 13-0 at the half. Miami's leading East Carolina 17-3 at the intermission. Vanderbilt's leading Mississippi 13-10 at the half. Pittsburgh leading Syracuse 17 to 10 at the half. Wake Forest over Virginia 10 to 7 at the half. Boston College leading Army 27 nothing also at the intermission. I score 14 to 6 Mississippi State leading Auburn. Auburn will kick it off. They have tried uh, to kick the ball away from Glenn Young. It cost him uh, a couple of five yard penalties when Dave Blanks is kicked out of bounds. Auburn gets their kicking unit on the field. Mississippi State will get their receiving unit out which means that Glenn Young will go deep, flanked by George Wansley on the far side and Michael Haddix on the near side with Al Ricky Edwards up in the middle. They'll have Corwin Aldridge and uh, Jerry Price for blocking purposes along the 30 and the restraining wall has Roman Grace, has Lamar Wyndham in there, Tony Sarter, Henry Kunz, and uh, Mike McDonald. So Dave Blanks will kick it off for the Auburn Tigers, Mississippi State leading at 14 to seven. Blanks awaiting the referee to indicate all is ready to go. We're gonna get the second half underway. Blanks is coming forward on the ball and he does kick a long driving kick that Glenn Young is gonna chase down in the end zone and is not going to run it out. So Mississippi State will play the ball. First down and 10 from their own 20 yard line. So Mississippi State will get Kent Hall out offensively at center. Bill Bell and Wayne Harris at the guards. Roman Grace and Bobby Mikatinas at the tackles. And Jerry Price at the tight end. They'll have John Bond at quarterback. Michael Haddix and Donald Ray King, your running backs. And Danny Knight, the wing back. Auburn will have Jeff Jackson and Quince Williams at the defensive ends. Edmund Nelson, Donnie Humphrey at the tackles. And Doug Dow Ottman will be the middle guard. We'll check the others in a moment. Bulldogs first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Auburn in a four-man front, a three-line backer set. Bond goes to Haddix on a straight dive play. And Haddix gets maybe a yard. Coming up, up to about the 21-yard line. Second and nine, Mississippi State is Ottman, the middle guard, made the principal hit. Auburn uses Chris Martin and Danny Skutak as their linebackers with Greg Tutt, Dennis Collier, Dave King, and Bob Harris in the defensive secondary. Bulldogs second and nine at the 21. Wide to the right goes Glenn Young. They'll put Lamar Wyndham in the ball game now as the wing to the left. Again, Haddix and King are strong to the right. Wyndham's in motion. Bond off the option. Comes on the pitch. Gives it to Wyndham, who is hit behind the line of scrimmage and driven out of bounds along the 21 by David King, the left cornerback who played it very well. So the short side option, again defensed well by the Auburn Tigers. No appreciable gain. Third and nine, Mississippi State faced with a possession play. Just underway in the third quarter. Bulldogs leading 14 to seven. Danny Knight, who is shuttling with Lamar Wyndham at the wing back spot. Brings the play in for Mississippi State. Auburn loosening up their secondary defense, thinking perhaps John Bond might be throwing on third and nine. The defense young wide to the right. The wing back is set to the left. Bond handles the ball, is in the pocket to throw, does set up, does throw over the middle. Pass caught by Price at the 30, out to the 31, and may have a first down. John will be dependent on where he's out of bounds. 
Out in front of the Mississippi State bench, Price had caught 11 passes coming in for 107 yards. Somebody's down on the field across the way. It is Jerry Price who made the reception. Time is called out in his behalf. We'll check the first down and we'll be back in one minute after these messages from our local sponsors. Looks like he landed right on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's what it looked like. Came right down on top of his shoulder. Right. that earned their first down at the 30-yard line. Ran Wyndham to the close side again. He picked up a couple of yards. So Mississippi State is second and eight at the 32. Ready to work with Corwin Aldrich in there at the tight end spot now. Replacing uh, Jerry Price who was shaken up a couple of plays ago. Bond bootlegs it to the right side. Fires to the sidelines to Glenn Young who makes the grab along the 40. And again, very close to the first down. I think he might be a step short. Greg Tutt was the man that pushed him out of bounds. John's putting the glasses on it. John, looks like it might be a little short. That's a little short, Jack. It be, should be about third, less than a yard. Third down, less than a yard. Mississippi State at their own 40. Bulldogs leading 14-7. to seven. We're a minute and a half deep in the third quarter. Again, uh, Jerry Price looks like he's okay along the sidelines. He was shaken up when he caught that pass a couple of moments ago. Auburn tightens up their defense, almost a 6-2. John Bond checks that defense. Bond, long snap count. Now there's motion. Now everybody moves, and let's see what we've got. Somebody jumped into the neutral zone. Somebody dived off sides on the well, offensive side of the I, ball. I think one of the Auburn defensive players came across and made contact first, Jack. Difficult to tell, of course, when you're looking at the uh, play from an angle. When there's all kind of movement on the line of scrimmage, uh, it is called against Auburn. It'll be first down Mississippi State. Yards. Bulldogs 11th first down. Mississippi State leading 14 to 7. That of course uh, gives Mississippi State an opportunity with good field position out. Operate from their own 45. We're in the opening moments of the third quarter. In fact we're two minutes deep into the third period. Bulldogs led 14-7 at the intermission and that's where we are right now. Glenn Young goes wide right. Danny Knight said wing left. Auburn's in almost a 4-3 defense, almost a 4-4. Bond back in the pocket to throw, fake short. Is going to throw long for Glenn Young on a fly pattern. He's got it, and out of bounds, however, along the 12-yard line. It was just a fly pattern, and Glenn Young beat his man, who was Tim Drinkard, however. The pass thrown a little bit too long, carried out of bounds. Glenn Young has uh, caught four passes this afternoon. He had eight receptions coming into the day's ball game. As long had been 31, he went 44 yards on a pass and run from Tim Parenton earlier. Second and 10, Mississippi State at their own 45. So a big uh, second down play faces the Bulldogs who look at a five-man defensive front from Auburn. Bond on the inside reverse gives to Wyndham who tries to turn the corner, not much daylight, and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Auburn played it extremely well with Edmund Nelson, their defensive captain, plugging up the hole on the left side. He may have picked up at most about a yard. It'll be third and nine at the 46, so Mississippi State has the possession play facing them. And O.W. Richardson is going to bring the play in to the Bulldog backfield. Operating with Kent Hall at center, Bill Bell, Wayne Harris at the guards, Roman Grace, Bobby Mikatinas at the tackles, Corwin Aldridge at the tight end, Danny Knight, Donald Ray King, Michael Haddix in the backfield with John Bond. Richardson comes wide to the right. Bond talking to Donald Ray King as he walks to the line of scrimmage. Long snap count. Bond handles the ball in the pocket to throw. Is going to screen it. Dust passes. Broken up. Good defensive play. Coming over was Darmini. D-O-R-M-I-N-E-Y. Darmini to break it up the screen pass. And the Bulldogs will have a fourth and six and be forced to punt the ball. Auburn gets David King back. Anticipating the punt. Going back to about his 20-yard line. Dana Moore checks on for Mississippi State. 
He'll stand at about the 32 and kick from about the 36. Auburn puts 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Good pass from center. Pressure's on. Kick is blocked. And Auburn picks it up. And racing into the end zone goes the Auburn Tigers. Chris Martin, the linebacker, blocked that punt and picked up that football and races into the end zone. There was no doubt about it that they blocked it. And Chris Martin had nothing but blue jerseys around him. And we've got a 14-13 ball game with 11.46 to go in the third quarter. And that brought the Auburn fans alive, as you might anticipate. Al Del Greco will be on to accept the 14th point. Stutak blocked the punt. And Danny Martin picked it up. And Martin raced it into the end zone. And now Del Greco will attempt to make it a 14-14 ball game. Pass back is good. The kick is up. We're tied at 14. Back with the Auburn kickoff in one minute after this message from the Gulf Oil Company. Blocked the punt. Chris Martin rolls it into the end zone unmolested. We're tied at 14. 11.46 to go in the third quarter. And Dave Blanks will kick it off again for the Auburn Tigers. Glenn Young will be deep. Flanked by George Wensley on the far side. Michael Haddock's on the near side. Al Ricky Edwards up in the middle. Here's Blanks on the ball. Kicks it long. Kicks it. Glenn Young. Four yards deep in the end zone. Will bring it out to the 10. To the 15. Comes to the 20. Fights over to the 25. And Auburn surrounds him and drops him at the 25. So Mississippi State. Who had the football. All the third quarter with 11.38 to go. We'll have to start again in a tied-up ball game. Let's pause. Five seconds for station identification. This is the Mississippi State University Football Network. This crowd is alive as the Bulldogs come on the line of scrimmage with first and ten at the 25 in their own territory. They use motion with Danny Knight to the wide side. Bond off the option, comes wide. Bond turns it up in the corner, gets a block, fights to the 30, knocked off his feet along the 33-yard line. As David King, up out of the secondary, did a good job and made the hit. Well, he did a good job of running the triple option again into the short side. The defensive halfback came up quick to cover the pitch man, and John had a little uh, daylight to run into and get a good uh, first down yardage. Second down now, about to three or four yards to go. Pickup of about seven yards, as John said, will be second and three. Bulldogs obviously need a drive. We're in a 14 to 14 ball game. They put a wing to the right, a wide receiver left, and on the dive play, driving for about two, maybe three, comes Donald Ray King, about a yard shy of the first down is Chris Martin, the man that ran the block punt in for the touchdown. He had run one back earlier this year in the same fashion. Stops him a yard shy of the first down. Well, that block punt really made old Mo change again, didn't it? Old Mo. Bulldogs a yard shy of the first down. Obviously need the first down. This crowd imploring their defense to hold on for one more play. Auburn stacks almost a seven-man line in there. Bulldogs use motion. They're going to sweep. And Danny Knight breaks the tackle and races to the 40 and has the first down at the 42-yard line. Auburn shot somebody through, and Danny Knight broke a tackle. And Danny Skutak finally rolled him down after a gain of six. Place the ball out at the 41-yard line. Bulldogs 12th first down. Mississippi State had moved on their previous possession from the 20 out to their own 46 and then had the punt blocked on 4th and 9. Lamar Wyndham joins the huddle bringing the play in from the Bulldog offensive staff. Next week Mississippi State of course goes against Alabama in the sellout of Tuscaloosa. First and 10 at the Auburn 41. Motion again with Lamar Wyndham wide to the right. Bond off the outside option. Is going to keep. Slides uh, to the 42 and is brought down along the 42 yard line. Auburn got good pursuit from Garmini and Carr. Greg Carr, sophomore linebacker, got out there to help out. A pickup on the play. A baby two yards. Second and eight. Mark the ball in Bulldog territory at the 43-yard line. The wide side of the field will be to the left of the Bulldog formation. The close side of the field is a Bulldog bench on the far away from opposite side of the field from us. Bond rolling back on the option. Pass run. Wants to throw. Does. Got a man open. Young at the mid midfield stripe. Knocked down at the Auburn 47. First down. Greg Tut was the man that brought him down. Bond rolling well to his left. Hit his open receiver. Well, again, doing a good job of coming out on bootleg action and running to his left and hitting Glenn Young on the sideline pattern. 
13th first down for Mississippi State. They're in Auburn territory now at the 47-yard line. We're tied up at 14. 9.20 to go in the third quarter. Auburn working basically out of a five-man front. Bulldogs put their wing to the short side of the field in front of the Auburn bench now. And a Bond off a delayed action. Somebody moved on the line of scrimmage. We got the snap, but penalty flags have already gone down. Uh, we had to move before the ball had been snapped, so it'll be a, a five-yard penalty against the Bulldogs. So rather than being in Auburn territory, move the ball back into Mississippi State territory. Put it on the 48-yard line, and it'll be first down and 15. John, we've talked a lot of times about how important yardage is on first down when you run the type of offense that both these ball clubs do, and here you set yourself up in a first and 15, it makes it awfully tough. Well, you like to, I know Coach Emery Bouillard likes to get at least four yards on a first down play, and of course, like you say, four yards right now is really not going to help a great deal, so we need to come up with pretty good yardage on the first down play. So you're talking about a nine-yard pickup is what you'd like to have right here on first and 15, and Bond wants to roll to the right and throw, and he does. To Young, who makes a great catch, leaping high in the air along the 43-yard line and got about seven. He just leaped high in the air. Scott Riley brought him to the ground. But Young just did a super job of catching that football. Well, he had a linebacker that was coming inside of Glenn Young, so John had to throw a little high for him and hope the guy could uh, get up and uh, get the football, and that he did. Super catch for a good uh, pickup of yardage on the first down play. It'll be close to second and seven at the 43-yard line in Auburn Territory. Young comes wide to the left. Auburn's got uh, Darmany over there covering him one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Bond going in the opposite direction to Haddock's on a sweep. And Haddock's gets maybe a yard down to about the 42. Auburn plugs up the hole well on the short side. Playing good, solid defense. This is Zach Hardy, the defensive end, who turned that play in. Wouldn't let him sweep, and Greg Carr helped him out. Gain of about a yard. Third and six. Placed the ball at the Auburn 42-yard line. Good Auburn pursuit. Cut off the outside. 8.15 to go in the third quarter. Mississippi State will take a timeout, and we'll be back after these messages from our local sponsors. Mississippi State calls timeout. Here are some scores furnished by WAUD Radio in Auburn and ABC. Final score, Clemson 17, North Carolina State 7. Final score, Michigan 38, Northwestern nothing. Final score, Nebraska 6. Missouri nothing. At the half, Southern Cal nothing, Notre Dame nothing. In the third quarter, Penn State 17, West Virginia 7. At the half, Kansas State 14, Kansas 7. At the half, Vanderbilt 13, Ole Miss 10. At the half, Oklahoma 35, Oregon State nothing. Final score, Pittsburgh 23, Syracuse 10. In the third quarter, Wake Forest 17, Virginia 7. With 8.14 to go in the third period, Mississippi State is third and six at the Auburn 42, having just used a timeout to decide what they want to do against a 6-4 front. Tailback Haddock's in motion wide to the left. Bond rolls in the opposite direction and throws to Young, who grabs it for the first down along the 34-yard line on the quick-out pattern. Again, a super catch by Glenn Young. John led him just a little bit uh, more than they would have liked. Glenn made a little diving catch for it, a little high, but came up with a catch and the big first down. The officials mark his knee down at the 35-yard line. That's a pickup of seven yards, and the Bulldogs stay alive on the drive as they pick up their 14th first down. We're tied at 14 with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Glenn Young comes wide to the left. John Bond puts his wing on the right. Uses him in motion and gives it on the sweep to Danny Knight. Getting a block. Turns inside. Penalty flag down as he hits to the 28-yard line. But we've got a penalty marker down. Well, it'll be against the Bulldogs, Jack. So you can wipe out that pickup of about eight yards. Skewtack made the tackle on the play. Danny Skewtack, the outside linebacker. Donald Ray King a little slow getting up, but evidently he's okay. Blocking below the knees against Mississippi State on the wide sweep. So you can wipe out that fine gainer. And the Bulldogs continue to hurt themselves with that first down penalty. They overcame the five-yard penalty a moment ago and picked up a third and six first down. Now the penalty, of course, is going to move them further back up the field to about the Auburn 44. And the down will be first in about um, 19 to go. From the point of the infraction, the penalty has stepped off. 
So the Bulldogs will be first down and about uh, 19 yards to go. Ball at the Auburn 44. So again, as we talked a moment ago, the Bulldogs will need the big gainer on first down. Lamar Wyndham will bring the play in that the offensive staff wants to run. Mike Kenhall is working at center. Bill Bell, Wayne Harris at the guards. Roman Grace, Bobby Mikatinas at the tackles. Bulldogs are using Darwin Aldrich in there at the tight end. He's the freshman. Jerry Price was shaken up earlier here in the second half. In motion goes Wyndham from left back to right. John Bond rolls in the pocket to throw. Under pressure, screens it to Haddix, who cannot hang on to the football. He wanted to turn up field before he got the football, John. It'll be second and 19 back at the 44-yard line for Mississippi State. Bulldogs screened it to the short side of the field and have used the short side quite considerably this afternoon. So again, a decision is made on the offensive sidelines of Mississippi State. 7.15 to go in the third quarter. We're tied at 14. Bulldogs had a 14-7 lead at the halftime, but Auburn blocked a punt, raced it into the end zone with Martin handling it from 46 yards out. Danny Knight goes in motion to the wide side. Bond rolls in that direction, wants to throw, does, passes, overthrown. Glenn Young was knocked down in the secondary, and no <laughs> penalty flag goes down. And the 3,000 Bulldog fans across the way want to know why. Somebody ran up his back, John. I, I thought maybe it caught the ball, and the guy made a great tackle because he sure tackled him. 3,000 odd Bulldog <laughs> fans across the way are really letting you know that they didn't agree with that. Awfully difficult to explain. Unless, of course, the contact happened after the ball had gone over the head of both. So it is third and 19 from the Bulldogs to the Auburn 44. Again, the wing back is to the wide side of the field. Lamar Wyndham, Auburn in a four-man front, four linebacker set. Bond back to throw, sets up, is being hit, throws in the flat, pass incomplete. Bond was being hit just as he released the football. Bob Harris was the defender. Aldrich was the intended receiver. And the Bulldogs will have to punt the football. David King goes back in safety position to the Auburn 10. Auburn would like to block another punt right here, John. You remember the old punt, Bama punt deal? They well, two punts and beat Bama. You know, over the years, Auburn has been one of the, the best at blocking punts. Dana Moore will stand at his own 40, kick from the 45. He can use all the field he wants. Low pass in center, picks it up. And his knee went to the ground when he picked it up, so Auburn will get the ball at the Mississippi State 42-yard line. A low pass from center. Dana Moore kneeled to the ground to pick it up. And the Bulldog kicking game has just went to pieces all of a sudden. So on fourth down, a low snap from center bounced back to Dana Moore. He kneeled down to catch the ball on one hop. That automatically downs the ball when the knee touches the ground. So whether he kicked it or not became academic because the Auburn people will get the football. Ken Hobby will be at quarterback for Auburn. They'll run out of their wishbone set. 6.56 to go, third quarter, tied at 14. Hobby looks at a 4-3 defense. Hobby off the counter option. Hit, fumbles the ball, but I think Auburn got it back. He was able to reach back in and got it. Johnny Cook came in on the blitz that time and made a good hit, caused a fumble, but the ball came right back to Hobby. Hobby loses a couple of yards as he was hit and stripped to the ball. It rolled right behind him, and he just reached back and got it. So that could have been a big turnover, but not. Auburn goes with two wide receivers. They're working with Carroll and Woods, left and right respectively. A wishbone set in the backfield. They put James in motion wide to the left. Ken Hobby operating at quarterback out of a counter option, makes the pitch. Edwards turning to the left side, hit and knocked down as he comes to the 40-yard line. Mike Edwards hit down by Rob Festmeyer, the strong safety. Had a pretty good seam to run in, but Festmeyer closed it up in a hurry. Gained about four yards on the play. It'll be third and eight. Auburn in Mississippi State Territory at the 40. Ken Hobby checks in with the Auburn coaching staff, looking into the bench to get a sign on what to do on third and eight. A little less than six minutes to go, third quarter. We're tied at 14. Woods wide to the right, Carroll wide to the left. Again, Auburn uses motion with Edwards, coming to the wide side of the field. Hobby checking as he sets up Edwards, rolls back left to throw, is looking, fires in the middle, pass under thrown. Incomplete forward pass, intending it for Carroll, who had gone down about 15 yards along the hash mark. Between the hash mark and the sidelines, the pass was underthrown. Fourth and eight, Auburn from the Bulldog 40. Auburn puts the punting unit out. Alan Bollinger has been doing the kicking for the Auburn Tigers and does it well. 
He'll stand at uh, about the Auburn 45-yard line, so he'll be kicking from about midfield. Bulldogs will put nine men on the line of scrimmage, two men back in twin safety along the 10 in Fessmeyer and Glenn Young. Awaiting the snapback for the Auburn Tigers. To the short man, they snap it, trying to go outside and running for a first down. Into the secondary come the Tigers all the way to the 20 and down to the 17. Auburn, on a fake punt, had Mark Dormany running for a first down. Auburn went to the short man, and Dormany got outside, and he raced it. They say to the 18-yard line on a fake punt. Auburn pulling out all stops now. Picks up their 10th first down, and they are first and 10 at the Mississippi State 18-yard line. Auburn goes with Carroll wide to the left. Set the tight end west, strong to the right. Out of the wishbone set. Ken Hobby, long snap count on the line of scrimmage. Goes on the first option, and diving to the 14-yard line. Comes George Peoples over his own right guard and right tackle, and got about four. Curtis Stowers, Johnny Cooks, Ernie Barnes on the stop. They gave him three yards, second and seven at the Bulldog 15. Five minutes to play, third quarter. We're tied at 14, and Auburn is driving. Chris Woods checks in, brings the play in, and goes wide left. Peoples and James are deep running backs. O'Neill the close back for the Auburn Tigers on second and seven. Ken Hobby leaves the Bulldog defense, goes to James off right tackle, fights inside the 10, and is stacked up along the nine-yard line. Curtis Stowers in the hole with Greg Williams' help. And Auburn looks like a determined ball club right now, John. They're fired up. Well, they've, uh, as we talked about, they've got that momentum going, and they're really just uh, fired up, as you say, it, and just knocking people back off the line of scrimmage right now. Third and two for the Auburn Tigers of the Bulldog 10. Again, one wide receiver. Tommy Carroll wide to the left, tight end strong to the right. Auburn working with Ken Hobby at quarterback. Hobby long snap count out of that wishbone set. Goes off the option and driving uh, for what might be the first down along the eight-yard line comes Ron O'Neill. We're well, they unstack. From here it looks like he might be short, but we'll wait. Curtis Stowers, Billy Jackson made the tackle. It is short. It'll be fourth and a yard at the nine. On the field comes Al Del Greco, who is the field goal kicker. But Auburn may do anything out of this because Joe Sullivan, the holder, was the starting quarterback this afternoon. If Del Greco attempts it, it'll be a 16, from the 16-yard line, a 26-yard effort. We're awaiting the snap back. It is put down. The kick is up. Long and good. Del Greco gives Auburn a 17-14 lead with 3.21 to go. We'll be back with the Auburn kickoff after this message from Fred's Discount Stores. will kick it off as Auburn takes the lead for the first time this afternoon 17 to 14 with 321 to go here in the third quarter Auburn scored in the third quarter after the Bulldogs led 14 to 7 they blocked a punt Danny Skutak blocked it Chris Martin ran it in from 46 yards out and then Auburn comes back converts a fake punt into a first down and drives for the field goal the kickoff by Blanks carries to Glenn Young who's waiting a step deep in the end zone. Comes out to the 10, out to the 15, to the 20, and fights over the 25 to the 29-yard line. So the Bulldogs will have to start again from deep in their own territory as Auburn had good coverage downfield. Tigers have played their kicking game extremely well. The Bulldogs' kicking game has gone to pieces there in the second half. A blocked punt and then a poor pass from center. And uh, the kicker, Dana Moore, had to kneel to get the football, and when he kneels down, of course, he's automatically down. 
that set up the Auburn field goal. So the Bulldogs are behind for the first time, 17 to 14. Auburn in a 5-3 as the Bulldogs put motion with the wing back from right back to left. Goes Danny Knight, and off the inside option, they pitch it to Haddix, he cannot turn the corner. And Haddix is knocked down by Bob Harris along the line of scrimmage. And Michael was shaken up on the tackle. Time will be called out in his behalf, and with timeout, we'll be back after these messages by local sponsors. The Auburn University basketball team will appear in inter squad scrimmages in Selma, Birmingham, and Montgomery before opening its season November 22nd with an exhibition game against Marathon Oil in Auburn. The inter squad games are scheduled for Selma, November 3rd at George Wallace Junior College at 7 p.m. in Birmingham on November 12th at Bowser Auditorium at 7 p.m. and in Montgomery, November 19th at Huntington College at 7.30. Second and 11 at the 27. Mississippi State's Michael Haddix was the youngster shaken up. We'll check on his condition. He was replaced in the backfield by George Wensley. So the Bulldogs on second and 12 go to Corwin Aldrich, the tight end for his second reception of the year. And he brings the football out to the 34-yard line where it is third down and about uh, five yards to go for the Bulldogs. A big possession play to make it third and four out near the 35-yard line. Bond uses motion with Knight from right back to left. Bond rolls the opposite direction. Off the option play, keeps slides in the secondary, has a first down. As he crosses the 40, well executed again. Again, this time running into the short side to, with the motion away from it, back into the short side. Bond was able to turn up inside and get the good first uh, yardage for the first down. So, Mississippi State will be first and 10 at the 42 as Collier and Martin chased John Bond out of bounds in front of the Bulldog bench. First and 10 at the Bulldog 42. Bulldogs have used one timeout here in the second half. Auburn has all three of theirs left. Again, motion, Wyndham from right back to left. And Bond again goes on the counter to, Haddock, to uh, make that Michael Haddix in there. And Haddix comes up a couple of yards to about the 44 with Danny Skutak and Bob Harris collaborate on the stop. Wanted to check and make sure it was Michael Haddix who had been shaken up a couple of plays earlier, but he's okay evidently. Back in the ball game. It'll be second and eight. Mark the ball in Mississippi State Territory at the Bulldog 44. Auburn leading 17 to 14. A minute and 40 to go. We're working in the third quarter. Bulldogs led 14-7 at the half. Haven't been able to move against the Auburn defense here in the third quarter. Bond again puts a wing in motion. Danny Knight back to the wide side of the field. Comes off the inside counter to the first man through and no daylight for Donald Ray King who's stacked up by Danny Skutak along the 45-yard line. He may have gotten about a yard out of the play. Auburn just doing a good job of defensing the inside game, John. Well, they come into this ball game with defense being their strong suit. And uh, over the years, Auburn, of course, has been noted for their defense. And right now, they're showing uh, good evidence that today. So the Bulldogs have to come up with a big play again on third and seven. Glenn Young goes wide to the right. Lamar Wyndham is winged to the left. Auburn's in a 5-3 defense. Wyndham goes in motion. Von rolls right to throw. Sets up. Fires to the sidelines. Pass intercepted by the Auburn Tigers at midfield and out of bounds at the 45 is Denny Collier. That's the first Auburn pass interception and the Bulldogs continuing to keep themselves in hot water will give Auburn the ball in Bulldog territory. A run back of about eight or nine yards on the interception by Collier. And Auburn's in great position now. They say he stepped out at the Mississippi State 47-yard line rather than the 45 in front of the Bulldog bench. Auburn will work with Ken Hobby at quarterback. Hobby's been the quarterback that's been able to move the Tigers this afternoon successfully. They're leading 17 to 14. Hobby goes to the tailback, and people sneaks inside the 45 and down to the 43. Billy Jackson and Ernie Barnes making the tackle on the play. A good pickup of about four yards on the play. It'll be second and six. Mark it inside the Mississippi State 44. Bulldogs are using Jackson and McEnany at the ends. Barnes and Collins at the tackle. Stowers, Cooks, and Miller, the linebackers. Johnson, Kenneth, and Johnson, Steve, and Rob Festmeyer, and Greg Williams in the secondary. Tigers second and six at the Bulldog 44. 
Hobby keeps a wishbone in the backfield. Hobby off the option, wants to throw, fires in the flat. Pass is caught by Woods at the 30, knocked down immediately by Steve Johnson. Chris Woods, first reception this afternoon, a pickup of 14 yards, and the Tigers are moving with a great deal of authority now, John. They've got it going their way. That's the end of the third quarter. Auburn 17, Mississippi State 14. Back with the fourth quarter after this message from Miller Beer. At the Auburn 39-yard line. And Mississippi State will have to come up with a big play here. At least get into field goal range if they can, John. The Auburn crowd is alive as Bond puts his wing to the right. Wide receiver left. Bond rolls left to throw. Under pressure, looking, fires to the left side. Too long for Glenn Young. He overshot him. Dennis Collier was the defender. And now Mississippi State has a decision to make. Dana Moore will come on the field and will probably be punting the ball. John with 7.18 to go in the ball game. Still a lot of time on the clock. Auburn leading 17 to 14. Bulldogs would like to get this kick away without any difficulty. They've had trouble in the kicking game this afternoon. Auburn doesn't get anybody back in safety position. The kick is to the far side of the football field. It is going to carry into the end zone. Dana Moore angled for the corner but didn't get it. So that'll be only a 19-yard kick. And Auburn gets it up to 20 with 7-10 to go in the ball game and leading 17 to 14. Auburn will get their offense out. Bob Hicks at center. Greg Zip, Keith Euclid the guards. Joe Rowe, Pat Arrington the tackles. Chris Woods the wide receiver. Ed West the tight end. Nope, make that Carroll the wide receiver. Ken Hobby engineering at quarterback with O'Neill, Peoples, and James. His wishbone backfield. O'Neill is the up back. James and Peoples the deep running backs. It's Peoples coming off left tackle. Breaks the tackle. Comes out to about the 25 and knocked off his feet by Curtis Stowers and Greg Williams along the 25 yard line. A big first down play for the Auburn Tigers. That's what you were talking about John. You like to get that four or five on first down and the Tigers did it and that particular carry got almost six out of it. So the second down a little less than five yards to go. Actually, second and four as they give him the 26-yard line. Auburn stays in their wishbone set. Javi operating at quarterback. Long snap count. Handles the ball. Options it. Makes the pitch left. And Peoples drives for the first down over the 30 and comes out to the 34-yard line. Auburn picking up a big first down. That's exactly where he stepped out. Williams and Johnson on the stop. Greg Williams. They say at the 33-yard line, Auburn gets their first down, which is a big one, and that's lucky number 13 for the Tigers, who lead 17 to 14 with 6.20 to go in the ball game. Wide receiver Carroll to the right. Ken Hobby, engineering at quarterback, puts his tight end strong to the left side. That's the short side of the field. Hobby, long snap count, goes to the left side, and Peoples is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. May have gotten a yard to the 34, Ernie Barnes and Curtis Stowers. Making the hit for Mississippi State. Gain of about a yard. Out to the 34. Second and nine, Auburn. Somebody's got a jersey torn off. I think that's Peoples. So Mike Edwards will check in as a running back for the Auburn Tigers. Clay Peacher checks in to replace Curtis Stoward as a linebacker for Mississippi State. Auburn second and nine at their own 34. Ken Hobby brings his ball club out of that wishbone set to the line of scrimmage. Handles the football. Options it to the short side to Edwards, who breaks the tackle and is chased down along the 40-yard line. Greg Williams, the safety man, came up to make the hit along the 40, about three yards shy of the first down. A good solid pickup, however. Gain of five. It'll be third and four for the Tigers at the 39. They've come to the short side of the field very successfully, and they stayed in bounds. Peoples checks back in. Edwards comes out. For the Auburn Tigers, Peoples have gotten him a new jersey on now. He's deep on the right side. James is deep on the left. O'Neill is the up back on third and four. And Hobby checks the defense, calls the signals. Goes on the first man through and very close to the first down. Up around the 43-yard line comes Peoples. And again, we wait for the officials to mark the forward progress of the football. This may necessitate a measurement along the 43, and they are going to measure. And the clock continues to run. The clock 
still running. And time has been called out and it's still running. And the clock is still running. It started running with 448 on it. It's still running. The clock is still running with 435 and 434. Now they finally stopped the clock with 434. It was 447 on the clock when time was called out in 18... 13 yep. seconds ran off the clock. I think one of the officials, uh, Coach Blard and the staff, called it to the, one of the officials' attention on the uh, side, on their side, and I believe he is motioning, coming back in to tell the referee. Auburn makes the first down at the 43-yard line. 17 seconds ran off the clock. Uh, 13 seconds ran off the clock. Of course, the big thing, Auburn making the first down. The officials are talking in front of the Auburn bench. Some 13 seconds ran off that clock. There's only 4.34 to go. Auburn leading 17 to 14. Well, you know, there is no excuse in something like that happening, though. Officials are still conversing. Now they're going over to talk to Coach Emily Ballard about it. The officials will hold up play for the moment. Seventeen fourteen, Auburn leading. The official clock shows four thirty-four. And evidently, they're going to leave it there, John. So Mississippi State's defense will be called upon right here to stop the Auburn Tigers. Auburn will go with Carroll wide to the right. Auburn took over the ball with the seven ten. Now the clock runs again as Auburn gets set to go off the offense with first and ten at the forty-three. Hobby long snap count. Hobby going to the tailback and Peoples off the left side is up to the 45 and uh, buried by Mike McEnany and company. Collins up underneath it all. Gained about a yard, maybe two. Peoples uh, a little slow getting up. Time will be called out on his behalf. He looked like he came down with his chest right on the football. May have knocked the wind out of him. He's a little slow getting up, but evidently he's okay. Mike Edwards will replace him. Chris Woods also comes in for Auburn. Make it second and eight, Auburn at the 45-yard line in their own territory, leading 17 to 14. Auburn, to my knowledge, has not turned over the ball except for the early pass interception this afternoon. If you're thinking along those lines, four minutes remaining in the ball game, Auburn leads 17 to 14. Tigers second and eight at their own 45. Again, now one wide receiver left is Chris Woods out of the wishbone set. Hobby Long snap count. Javi handles the ball, goes to James, off right tackle, and James comes up to about the 47, maybe the 48. Rob Festmeyer up out of the secondary, knocks him down. Because Auburn has gotten away from the triple option game now. They don't want to take any too many chances as far as pitching the ball out. They've gone to more or less just power running plays off tackle. Ernie Barnes a little slow getting up for Mississippi State. 3.34 on the clock. It'll be third down, about five yards to go for the Auburn Tigers. The ball is just shy of midfield by a yard. Bulldogs bring Ricky George in to replace Ernie Barnes defensively at tackle. So Auburn has an opportunity here to run more time off that clock with three and a half to go in the ball game and leading 17 to 14. Carroll comes wide to the left. Auburn keeps their tight end, West in, strong to the right. Hobby sets his wishbone with O'Neill close with James and Edwards, your two running backs. Hobby handling the ball, going to James, off right tackle. Got maybe a yard up to about midfield, and that's about all. And the Bulldogs surround him at that point. Auburn will be fourth and four at midfield, and Alan Bollinger will check on. Brock is down to three minutes left in the ball game. Mississippi State has only one timeout left, remember. And now as a youngster again shaken up for Mississippi State. Glenn Collins, the other tackle shaken up. Now we'll check on Ernie's condition for you. Ernie's back in the ball game. So he's okay. And Glenn Collins was the man shaking up the other tackle for the Bulldogs. He's coming up under his own power. We'll go to the sidelines. Looks like he's limping just a little bit. Auburn will be fourth and four at midfield. With 2.50 on the clock and the clock running. 
And let's see what the Tigers will do here. They are not going to punt the football. Auburn fourth and four at midfield. And Ken Hobby with 2.38 to go is not going to punt on fourth down. Hobby sets his wishbone in the backfield. And now somebody moves. I'll tell Hobby. you what, Jack. They have tried, I believe, take a delay of the game in the center snap the football. Of course, there's a flag on the play also, and I don't understand it. It came in late. So we'll see what the situation is. Well, this will be a very interesting situation because if it is allowed, the Bulldogs will have the football at midfield. So the officials discuss it with both teams, and Mississippi State gets the ball at the 50-yard line, John. Auburn did not get the playoff. There was no delay. Did not get a first down, obviously. And Mississippi State takes over at the 50-yard line with 2.28 on the clock and only one timeout. So... Pat Dye is really arguing with one of the officials on the sidelines, and this crowd doesn't like it, but that's where we are at the 50-yard line. First and 10, Mississippi State with 2.28 to go. And now the officials walk in and hold up time again. Referee's timeout. He's going to come over and talk to Pat Dye, the Auburn coach. They're off the football field on the sidelines in front of the Auburn bench. Coach Emily Ballard is watching more way across the football field and talking to John Bond about it. <laughs> Only one timeout remaining for Mississippi State. 17 to 14, Auburn leading 228 to play in the ball game. And like so many Mississippi State Auburn games as of late, it's coming right down to the wire. <laughs> Official timeout. Now Auburn wants a timeout. And with Auburn taking a timeout, we'll be back in one minute after this message from the Gulf Oil Company. I wish somebody would run 50 yards, though. I wish somebody would run 50 yards, preferably in the white. We'll end up with a 17-17 time. We need a big play somehow. Well, let's break the heart. Go uh -huh. ahead. Okay, pitiful day. First and 10 at midfield. One timeout left, trailing 17 to 14. Bond off the option. Goes to Donald Ray King, and he cannot go. He was stacked up for a gain of at most a yard. Auburn doing a great job defensively with Martin and Williams. The left defensive end in the middle linebacker making the stop. Lamar Wyndham will bring the play in. He shuttles with Danny Knight. John Bond talks to his ball club, brings him down on the line of scrimmage. Van Young goes wide to the left. Lamar Wyndham comes wide to the right. Auburn's in a 5-2 defense. Motion with Wyndham. Bond rolls left to throw. Sets up. Fires to the sideline. Young cannot hang on to it. Incomplete. Young was hit by Greg Tutt just as the ball arrived. And it goes incomplete. Third and nine at the 49. Then ran the out pattern. Down about eight or nine yards and toward the sidelines. You might look for him here, John, to run the um, out and down pattern. Bulldogs need to go for a first down at this point. 150 is all that's left on the clock. So the Auburn defense is alive and their crowd is alive. Dan Young goes wide to the left. Addison King, your running back, set behind Bond. He looks at a 4-4 defense, very loose. Bond uses motion with Danny Knight. Bond rolls left to throw, sets up, looks, fakes, is going to be hit. Dropped at the 50-yard line. So, it is fourth down and 10 for Mississippi State at the 50-yard line, and the Bulldogs will use their final timeout. As Edmund Nelson made the tackle, we'll be back in one minute after this message from our local sponsor.
Fourth and ten for the Bulldogs from the 50-yard line. 137 left in the game. Bond rolls back to throw. Has room to run. Fires. Pass complete. Danny Knight breaks it to the 30, to the 20. Knocked down at the 19-yard line. Danny Knight with a great catch. Well, he just went downfield and just made a turn in for a moment. It looked like John Bond was going to just turn up field and pick up the first down, which he could have done. He started out again, saw Danny and I hit him on a good curl pattern, and Danny was able to get on up field to pick up some more extra yardage. 125 left on the clock. The Bulldogs are 19 yards away from the go-ahead touchdown. Clock runs with 119. 117 to go. Bond looking at the Auburn defense. Bond uses motion. Goes on the short side sweep, and Wyndham is chased out of bounds. Along the 18-yard line, Bulldogs stop the clock with 107 to go. Donnie Humphrey chases him out of bounds. It'll be second and nine from the 18-yard line. And Mississippi State needs another big play, John. <laughs> uh, but only I do, Jack, in just a second there. When it, I guess we're the world's greatest at just going right down to the wire with the ball game. I don't think there's any question about <laughs> it. The, uh, not uh, any ball club to follow if you are faint-hearted. Well, will the Bulldogs try to put it deep in the end zone while they stay on the ground? They're trailing 17 to 14. They're in field goal range right now. John Vaughn wants to throw and looks to the end zone and throws. Touchdown, Mississippi State! Touchdown, Danny Knight! John Vaughn drilled it in with exactly a minute to go. Mississippi State hits two big plays. Danny Knight on the receiving end of the touchdown pass. Well, what a pass he threw, Jack. Mississippi State 20, Auburn 17. One minute on the clock. <laughs> the Bulldogs took the football at midfield and Auburn goofed up a fourth down play. What a break they got. And now we'll try the extra point out of the hole to Parker. Morgan kicks it up. He is good. 21-17, Mississippi State. Back with a Bulldog kickoff after this message from Fred's Discount Stores. it off deep. Buford picks it up around the five trying to get outside is in trouble and knocked down at the six yard line. Great coverage by Mississippi State's kickoff unit John. Yeah, of course Jack you know they had a little problem today every time it kicked off Auburn has come out and brought it out in good uh, field position this time it did a super job of getting down and stopping Auburn on the five yard power about six yard line. Joe Sullivan is going to kick in for the Auburn Tigers at quarterback. He's their best passer. They'll go with three wide receivers and the Bulldog defense is going to be sorely pressed. Sullivan back to throw, fires left side, pass almost intercepted. Off the fingertips of John Miller, who made a diving effort at the football. It'll be second and ten for the Tigers with 50 seconds to go. Well, let's hope that clock runs as fast now, Jack, as it did a while ago. Well, I'm not too concerned, John. You know, I thought we got robbed of 13 seconds earlier in the game. Right now, I'm kind of glad of it. Yep. I didn't like it then. I'm liking it better. Second and ten. Auburn from their own six. Bulldogs lead 21-17. Sullivan wants to throw. In the middle of the pass, batted up in the air and again almost picked off. Curtis Stowers got a hand on it. It'll be third and ten on the incomplete pass with 45 seconds on the clock. Auburn shuttles in. Tommy Carroll bringing instructions in. We missed the station break at four o'clock. Grab it now, fellas. Down the line. Five seconds on the MSU Football Network. Third and ten, 
Auburn third and ten from their own six needs a big play right now. Sullivan rolls in the end zone to throw. Setting up. Looking. Looking. Fires it deep up the middle. And the pass is fought for and incomplete. Williams was fighting with Edwards. Greg Williams of Mississippi State fighting with Mike Edwards. For Auburn down around the Auburn 45-yard line. Incomplete. Auburn is fourth and ten from the six with 36 seconds on the clock. Ball is on the Auburn six-yard line, John. <laughs> Last week we were dying with 47 seconds on the clock. This week it's 36 seconds on the clock. How many years has this taken off of your life? <laughs> so Sullivan will try it again on fourth down. And he's in the end zone to throw and he sets up and he fires it deep up the field. And the pass is intercepted by Mississippi State. And Kenneth Johnson gets his second interception of the afternoon. The Auburn Tiger is dead. Yeah, we can put out the fire and put the dolls in the wagon. Auburn has one timeout left, and that's all. With 27 seconds on the clock, the Bulldogs will be at the Auburn 45. What a tremendous comeback by Mississippi State, who were in command of the ball game at the halftime, 14 to 7, and then made every mistake you could conceivably make. And now John Bond will run two plays if he can hang on to the football. Auburn's in a 3-4-5 defense. Bond sits on the football. Nobody's going to get to him. There are 3,000 fans across the way are breathing some kind of sigh of relief, John. <laughs> They're not the only ones. I Auburn's <laughs> not calling timeout. And the clock is running with 13 seconds. So that's going to be the old ball game. And the Bulldogs are going to win it 21-17. You know what? Could you believe it kind of deal? It is all over. Mississippi State 21, Auburn 17. What do you see, John? Well, Pat, I tell you what, he is really upset at some official out there, Jack. Well, a happy group of Bulldogs will be flying back home in a matter of a, an hour or so. They'll head to Columbus, Georgia, and fly out with their sixth victory of the year under their belt and only one loss. And that's one of those who would have believed it. We've seen it happen a lot of times, but very seldom have we seen the Bulldogs pull it out. Well, we'll talk about it in a moment. We'll catch our breath, you catch your breath, and uh, we'll put you to work, sir, after these messages from our local sponsors. Lord, did you... Tickets for Auburn's remaining home game are on sale now in the winning ticket booth. The winning ticket booth, tickets are on sale for Auburn's remaining home game against Florida and on Texas State. We are the University of Alabama team here in Edwards, South Carolina.